Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 31st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you my weekly Arctic sea ice and Arctic climate update. And I'm just going to do this in, in a manner that provides you a general overview of Arctic weather, climate, and sea ice related conditions. So we've got a lot of information. I'm gonna dive into it really quick and, and try and get through it all for you. So just looking at present Arctic sea ice extent as measured by JAXA, which is a Japanese sea ice monitor. Presently, Arctic sea ice extent is around sixth to seventh lowest on record, trending just above the average trend line for the decade of the 2010s. It's worth noting that the present Arctic sea ice extent is about 2.7 million kilometers below the 1980s average, though about 1.2 million kilometers above record lows for the date set in 2012. It's worth noting that the overall trend of loss is still very much apparent in the present sea ice extent measure with the decadal loss trend visible here from the 1980s to the 90s to the 2000 time frame in this dotted black line and finally to the 2010 time frame as indicated by the dotted purple line. It's worth, worth noting that Arctic sea ice extents are moving well below traditional standard deviation ranges so and, and negative anomalies below the NSIDC or National Snow and Ice Data Center baseline at around 2 million kilometer square kilometer negative anomaly. Tracking negative anomalies, negative daily anomalies is Zach Labe which shows an ongoing trend of loss for all months. Now taking a look at sea ice concentration in general, we've been talking about this region of very thin ice in the East Siberian Sea, which continues to get winnowed away by the impacts of wind and waves. It's worth noting that though these, these ice in this region has continued to thin, the, the rate of loss has slowed down as, as we get closer and closer to the end of melt season. This is something that we would expect. Uh, the Arctic is getting less solar radiation and, and temperatures are, are starting to cool down with uh, seasonal changes. It's also worth noting that some of the storms that were predicted in the GFS model earlier last week did not emerge as as predicted in the same intensity that they were predicted. We did see some storms dipping down to 980 or 978 to 980 millibar or HPA range. And this, this did generate a lot of wind in, in regions of the Arctic Ocean, but not as strong as predicted. So the impacts to sea ice were were muted somewhat. It's worth noting that we did see some rather high wave heights in the area of the Labtev Sea on August 30th with wave heights around 11 to 12 feet. So, so still some strong winds nearing gale, gale force kicking up waters and waves near the sea ice, which has is having this visible impact of thinning the ice in the edge zones on the Siberian side primarily and near the Beaufort Sea, but not as strong impacts as we may have expected. Now, just taking a look at the satellite shot, we notice a lot of cloud cover, very wide open areas of water in the Beaufort Sea, in the Labtev Sea, in the East Siberian Sea. I'm just gonna go ahead and cycle this, model, this uh, satellite imagery for you so you can see the, the storms swirling around and the sea ice moving quite a bit. It's quite quite mobile 
in these frames um, subject to the effect of, of wind and wave as we mentioned before and just zooming in I just like to show you this edge zone here near the laptop C which is which is quite diffuse in the visible satellite shot we've got some overlying clouds but you can see through it this this spackling there we go that's a better shot for August 29th the spackling of sea ice and 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 very low concentration sea ice in this zone just an overall look at the Arctic we can see some wildfires kicking back up in Siberia particularly near a zone where it's been quite warm lately and where weather models indicate that warming will continue in the sense that we are expecting to see temperatures 10 to 20 to, to possibly as high as 30 degrees Celsius above average, particularly as you move over into the Pacific region of Siberia here. It's also worth noting that wildfires do continue in British Columbia despite increased levels of moisture, but these fires have been tamped down considerably. Overall, the, the picture of the Arctic is one of much reduced sea ice, and, and we can see a number of human-caused climate change-related impacts in these far, the far nor northerly extent of wildfires, as well as the much reduced ice pack compared to traditional times. I'd just like to show you a, a map uh, or a, a graphic indicating temperature departures from normal for the region of the high Arctic or the region above the 80 degree north latitude line. And as we get into fall, we can tend to see this temperature measure levitate above the, the green average line for 1958 to 2002 as Polar amplification te effects tend to kick in more as the angle of the sun drops. And this is what we're seeing in the 80 degree north latitude line now with above average temperatures having prevailed now for the past three weeks. It's worth noting though that these temperatures are starting to dip below freezing and this is a trend that, that we would expect to reinforce as we get further and further into September. Now, I just want to show you some pre predicted temperatures for the Arctic, particularly in the zone of Siberia adjacent to the Pacific. And toward the end of this model, it's worth noting that temperatures in eastern Siberia here are predicted to range between 70 and 80 degrees in the, in de in the, peak, in the time of peak daily heating which is pretty extraordinary for this time of year. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to temperature anomalies, predicted temperature anomalies. These are for September 9th predicted. And note how far in excess of normal this is for typical periods. It's also worth noting that the Arctic as a whole through the projected next 10 day time frame is expected to range from around 0 0.8 to 1.8 degrees Celsius above average with heat moving in through the ridge zones in on the Pacific side, particularly through the Bering and Chukchi seas as well as through East Siberia. So there is a strong ridge zone in the North Central Pacific and this is tending to quite a bit of warm temperatures into this section of the Arctic, so we'll need to look at the East Siberian Sea region in particular for the potential for ice thinning as we approach the end of melt season. It's also worth noting that ridge patterns in Eastern Europe have all, are also indicated for, for transporting heat into the Arctic over this time frame. So just a general overview of the present climate situation for the Arctic. Looks like the Arctic is tracking for around fifth to seventh lowest on record, but we'll have to look at the East Siberian zone, East Siberian sea zone, and the Siberian side of the Arctic for potential for continued melt. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.